all right guys welcome back um i've done quite a few wiring harnesses now uh, mostly alh i've probably done over 200 alh harnesses now and i don't know somewhere between 30 to 50 um pd anything bew through brm harnesses but i have been waiting for somebody to send me a common rail harness so that i could do one of those and it finally happened one came in so i wanted to go over it and kind of give you guys a rundown on what to do with it so i actually got it probably 75 percent done here maybe even more than that i'm pretty much ready to finish taping it up here but i really had to get it this far all along just so it wasn't a complete rat's nest um, um, as I said before, I've done a ton of these Volkswagen harnesses, but this, this common rail harness is something else. And I guess to, to start with just looking at the, the schematics for it, if you've watched my other videos, um, this is six pages. The PD harness is four pages and the ALH harness is three pages. So it is just quite... I don't know how else to describe it besides a rat's nest. It is nuts. Um, interestingly enough, a lot of this doesn't end up getting cut. Like a lot of the sensors don't need cut and spliced back in or anything like that. But I didn't know how much to cut out to get started with this thing. So I went ahead and had the guy send me everything he had. And of course it comes about like this is what you end up pulling out of the car and that's even with a lot of ends cut on it But what I couldn't believe was on the ALH and the PD harnesses They're pretty much straightforward that the small plug from the ECU over to the most of the engine sensors um, it's not like inner woven into the rest of the harness and then the bigger plug basically only has a couple of sensors on it along with power stuff. Well, they completely just destroyed that whole idea with these common rail harnesses. I spent hours weeding every one of these plugs out of that, that main section there. Um, it wasn't... I, I don't want to say it's terribly hard... But the time-consuming factor is just unreal. Um, they did not, and I guess maybe it depends on who built the harness and the factory, but I swear every sensor had two more wires in this junk pile that were going through it. And as you know, the um, VW loved using colors that are like so close together, you really have to check the pins. To be able to tell for sure what you're looking at so like i said i want to do an overview on this but i really got to lay it out for you what you're going to have to do um you're going to have most of this junk right here and then you're just going to have to go through on that schematic one wire at a time to each sensor and see where it's at and make sure they're all good and then trace out every wire in here that is crossing through those and verify you don't need it for anything before you cut it and then you can cut I like I say I, I bet I cut 60 wires out of here that were woven into these main sensors that you need to make it run so it was just yeah time consuming is the word um but overall like I say it honestly wasn't terrible once I did that because there's not a whole lot to go back in and fix, but man, there are a ton of sensors. This is double the sensors of the PD and probably three times the stuff the ALH has to run. So, and I went through with a couple of different tuners and most of them are not really willing to remove a lot of this stuff. I don't know. I'm not going to pretend to be an engineer or know everything that's needed to make an engine run, but the ALH can sure get deleted down to a lot less than this. But there's, I mean, there's a ton of just fuel sensors and obviously with the high pressure 
fuel rail, you're going to have that. Um, I don't know that I really need to go through each sensor individually. As I said, a lot of these were already in the harness, and I just had to weed out what was needed and what wasn't. Um, and then get it down into this, this section here. But there's a ton of different power, way more power than I was expecting actually, going out to a lot of these sensors for the fuel pressure and stuff. So I ended up, um, I mean, I don't know how else you would do it. I know a lot of guys don't like splicing into harnesses, but if, if you start looking at these, these Volkswagen harnesses, there's splices everywhere. They just were not the least bit concerned about splicing stuff together. So I, I try to make it as clean as I can, but I use these heat shrink crimp connectors. Um, I've seen a lot of guys have issues soldering. With the diesel vibrating, it'll crack the wires where they got hot. So this just has worked well for me, and I haven't had any issues over the last seven or eight years, so that's what I do. But you're going to start just pretty much right where it comes off the engine. There's going to be quite a few power wires here. Again, I can't go through each one of them, but you've really just got to trace out each sensor. It's, it's definitely a, a job here. I went through and just looking along here there's of course there's a lot you can still X out and there's a lot that I took out of there um, so you're just gonna have to look at that and maybe see um, I mean I can definitely help you guys depending on what tuner you use tell you what you're gonna need and what you don't need I kind of have in yellow there everything that I had to wire and then red X is on everything I deleted but you'll just have to get these printed off yourself and and go through them one at a time um anyway but it it'll pretty clearly trace out you know you've got a lot of power coming in over here there's more power here and there's more power over here so you really just have to go and trace each one out and i ended up getting those spliced together here where they all come together into one fuse for the sensors again they they really overkill this stuff um, one 15 amp fuse will run almost every sensor on here there were enough of them that i went ahead and did a separate sensor just for the glow plug relay and the ecu and that's all coming off of here and that was pretty easy that way and then again, it's it's set up just like I do all my other harnesses. There's one 87 relay to power everything on. And then I have one other fuse that goes right to the OBD port. So it'll save your scan gauge or, or whatever you have there for reading stuff. You can be able to save your stuff as long as you've got that. This here is wired straight to the battery. And then, yeah, the relay power on wire. And then this is just the factory um, factory ground that was on the harness. I did have to splice in ground for the, um, let's see. Yeah, the glow plug relay has power spliced in, or ground spliced in, as well as the OBD and my power relay. And the other interesting thing, it, it only has CAN bus to can to go to the OBD port. There is no K line. I believe there is a pin you can splice to get K line, but being most everybody gets all their info off of K line on these newer ones anyway, and they'll flash that way. There's really no need to do a K line, I guess, unless your your scan gauge or something won't read. But I did not look into that. Um, and another thing I was going to say is I don't know. There's these early um, CBEA engine code common rails and then the CJAA. And this is actually a CJAA harness. And this is a CBEA ECU there. And they seem to be the same. I haven't seen a lot of schematics for those early CBEAs. But from what I can see, it's all going to work the same. 
and you should be able to lay it all out like this but it did take you know I, I really had to just take one sensor at a time get it completely isolated from the junk and then kind of coil it up and tape it and then go down the line that way until I had them all separated and then I got them all kind of fine-tuned and to length again I don't know some of this stuff may need extended compared um, according to where you put it in the vehicle but these were almost all uncut sensors so I just went ahead and left them at the length they were at and that's I mean that's really pretty much it there are um, EGT sensors that got cut out and I think maybe the first one is needed I'm not sure that again that's going to depend on tuning so it is it kind of sucks though because I haven't found that a lot of the tuners know what sensors are needed or not so it's kind of confusing there I had to leave in quite a bit of stuff I might have normally wanted to delete but this should cover what you'd need to do to make your own common rail harness um, again, that schematic is really key to getting it all figured out there. And I think maybe the one key wire that's not very uh, laid out in the, in the schematics would be the black and yellow wire for power. And that probably... Let's see, I'm trying to see if I can find it, but the black and yellow wire off of the ECU is going to be your kick-on wire. And that's not very, very clear on this harness. So, I think it is going to be this, this pin 87, black and yellow, that is going to be your your power that goes up here and gets kicked on with the key that's the wake up wire for the ECU so obviously the the reds and the browns in your power here are pretty clear but that um and in fact I think that's it right there that's going to be your kick on wire to turn the ECU on so that's the only real power wire you need to know other than that it's it's all laid out there that's what it should look like um obviously I'm usually pretty good at answering questions here on YouTube um you can find me on Facebook if you need to and this schematic is all on the TDI swap trucks page on Facebook so yeah if you're looking at getting into a common rail swap this is what you're going to need to set up for the electrical so hopefully that answers people's questions and yeah as always thanks for watching guys see you next time